So uh, I've hit started to record. Um, so you can go whenever you're ready. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Um, so hello, I am back for another round of paint night here. Um, and uh, just to give a little intro, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm Sarah Rubes on Instagram. So you can follow me there and check out my art. Um, I am a co-founder of Art Snacks, which is a monthly subscription box for art supplies. You can see and hear more about Art Snacks at artsnacks.co. Um, this is what I look like, but tonight you will just see my hands. So keep that in mind. Um, this is our logo for Art Snacks. We put a sticker in all of our boxes. Um, and just to throw this out there, we'll talk about it later too. Um, if you are a Bristol Community College student, you have a special discount code to subscribe to Art Snacks. It's Bristol 10, and that'll get you 10% off your first box. So you'll see that again later at the end. Starting soon? Well, we're starting now. So I'm gonna clear my area a little bit. Um, so let's go over the supplies for tonight. Um, like I mentioned before, um, or Mike was talking about before, if you used your canvases from uh, the last session, totally fine. If you've got construction paper, um, maybe not computer paper. Computer paper tends to be really uh, flimsy. I don't totally recommend it, but if it's the only thing you've got, go for it. Painting is really about experimenting too. But I've got some construction paper, um, just some white that I'm going to be testing and swatching the paint colors on. Um, but if you've got you know, old mail that you wanna paint on, um, if you take a thick part of a newspaper, you can paint on the newspaper, cardboard, you know, if you've got some Amazon boxes lying around, acrylic paint does work and shows up opaque on top of surfaces like cardboard. So you are good to go if you are looking for a unique surface to work on. Um, but tonight I'm gonna work on this uh, construction paper to swatch out my colors. And then I'm gonna do two floral paintings. We're gonna do sort of a big one on here. And if we have time, we'll do another one um, on this little square. So these are just panels with um, like a linen canvas on top. So pretty useful when it comes to painting. So I'm gonna put those to the side. Other items that I have here, I have the paint. I think you guys all got one. So I'm gonna use one for now. We got a couple different brushes. Um, there's really no rules when it comes to brushes for acrylic paint, but I am gonna stick to a few basic ones. Let's see, I like, I like this one with the flat top here. So I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna, I have um, two cups of water for one, one cup for general dipping and cleaning. And the other one is um, for when this one gets dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier than going back and forth to the kitchen. Um, I will probably use this guy too, um, sort of a flat and a little bit rounded top. Good to have on hand to cover uh, larger areas. Um, and then I'll just hold one of these little guys off to the side too, um, in case I want to get into detail work. Our florals. Um, other random things, I have a cloth here that I always use for acrylic painting and just painting in general. Um, so I always have that on hand. I don't mind getting it dirty, but if you have paper towels, you can use those as well. I was painting the other day, so I'm not gonna throw these out. I'm just gonna continue to use them. Um, and you'll need, um, if you are looking to mix colors, you'll need a slick surface of some sort. Um, I have a paint palette just because I am painting all the time. Um, these are reusable, you can easily clean these, but if you have a plate, uh, like a ceramic plate, that's easy too. This will very easily come off with soap and water. So um, that is if you're mixing colors up. So for now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our colors. So I'm gonna open all these guys. I always like hold my breath every time I open these because I'm afraid they're gonna explode on me. But we've got white, we've got this like fuchsia. This is like a lavender. Wait for it. All right, we got like a royal blue. Oh my goodness, okay. 
I'm glad these are closed because you know you don't want them to dry out, but they are a little hard to open. Green, like a forest green, and then we've got black. Great. So these are this is an awesome color palette for floral painting. I'm gonna take my medium brush. Oh, also I have I just have like a pencil off to the side. We're gonna sketch out our florals before we um before we actually paint them. So that's that's uh it for supplies. So we're gonna do let's just swatch out these. I know you're not gonna see the white when I put it on here, but that's how you know you got a nice clean white. Oh, you do kind of see that a little bit of the shine. White will be good for mixing when you want to make a lighter color. So if you add white to the fuchsia, you'll get a light fuchsia. So I'm just cleaning my brush off here. I'm going to move forward to the fuchsia. Be careful not to paint over the white. Ooh, this is a nice like dark pink fuchsia. And with one stroke, uh, it looks like it's very pigmented, which means, you know, you can't see the white coming through. So it's, it's a good opaque pink. Let's move on to our purple. Ooh, I really love this purple. Again, another solid color when you lay the paint down. Now I took a walk at lunch today trying to find some flowers that would be worth painting, um, but everything is still sort of in the ground or just like in the growing stage right now. So I ended up looking up a few flowers on Pinterest. That's sort of like my go-to outlet for finding inspiration. So Pinterest has a ton of flowers and I got some good inspiration from there. Um, so we will be totally fine with this color palette. The blue is really great too. It's standing out quite nice. The green, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with because leaves are, not all leaves are green. Um, some of them are dark green, some of them are light green. They may not all be this like solid green. This is a good like spring palette. Um, and then lastly, we've got our black. If we want to go a little bit darker with some of our pinks and purples and blues and greens, um, we would mix black with that. So I'm just testing out this black. It's pretty solid, not bad. And look, my first cup is already, already pretty saturated with pigments. So it's always nice to have that back up. All right. so. Uh, another great thing about acrylic is that it dries super fast. So once you test out your swatches here, you can really just like graze your finger over it and see that you're not going to get really anything on your finger. I may have just gotten that green on my finger, but we're going to pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> um, the white is there. This paper is just like bleached white. So that's why you can't see it but no worries. Um, so I just want to loosen up a little bit and practice some of the techniques that we're going to use in order to make our flowers. Um, so I'm going to grab my little detail brush here. Um, and the flowers that I want to make, um, actually, you know what, let me draw them out first so you can get an idea of how I want to make these flowers. Flowers are super unique in a sense that like no two flowers are the same. Um, but a really nice way to make super simple flowers using a simple color palette is um, to make sort of like swirls, sort of uneven swirls. And I'll bring this closer to you in a moment, but um, you know, when you look inside like a rose and you see the swirl of the petals coming out, that is what we're sort of trying to recreate here. So see how it's uneven? It's not like complete like ovals within each other. We're basically just going to recreate this with our paintbrush. And you can overlap your lines a little bit, which short, sort of shows you know where our texture is going to be with our paints. 
And I'll do one more of like on its side here. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some leaves. So you just sort of find an edge there, make a leaf. Leaves usually have, oh, sorry for the shaking there. Leaves usually have this um, line going down the middle, sort of like the main artery of a leaf. We can make them really big. Sort of like that. You can do as many leaves as you want. You don't, every flower doesn't have to have leaves, but that's sort of the gist of what our flowers are gonna look like. So let's practice. Um, I'm gonna take a detail brush because it's pretty small. And I'm just gonna pick, um, let's do pink. And I always start from the middle. And I'm honestly just gonna go right over these. This can be messy too. It's it's okay. It doesn't have to look completely perfect. I'll give you guys a little close up there. I'm not going directly on the pencil line. I'm sort of like dancing around it. I've got some thick areas, some dry brush areas. Just sort of building up the texture of the flower. And then at a certain point, I'm gonna start adding the purple in. So here's where the magic happens. I'm gonna pull some pink here. Clean off the brush. Ooh. And then pull some purple and I'm gonna mix these a little bit. So it's really making like a bright purpley fuchsia. And I'm just gonna go in here and just continue the circular style. Because this purple has a little bit of fuchsia in it, it's helping it blend in. There we go. So I'll give you a close up there. So again, this is just like a, this is like a warm up. Doo, doo, doo. Um, when I move onto the canvas, I'm gonna draw out like just a general area of where I want my flowers. Um, and then I'm going to improvise with the swirls in the middle. So I have like my last ring around there and I'm at the end here and I'm just gonna go with straight up purple, not with my mixture. Cool. So we went from pink to purple, clean this off a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna paint this whole thing, but I do just wanna do a leaf. Just wanna give you an idea of what that flower looks like. I'm just gonna fill in this leaf here. Um, you don't have to fill in the entire leaf. I'm gonna leave that little white piece open there just to give it some texture. And that is the style of flowers we are going to paint tonight. So if you've drawn something out, feel free to continue on that. See, it looks good from like every direction too. Turning it like that, turning it like that. Um, but I'm gonna move on to my canvas actually. So I'm gonna put this off to the side over here so you can still sort of see it. Um, let's see, should I do big or little? Last time we did little, uh, we painted apples. So I think I'm gonna go big, you know, and I'm gonna start out with drawing out where 
I want my flowers to be. So I'm gonna do a few of them. So let's do, it's gonna be one big flower. And along with the bigger canvas, I'll be using bigger brushes too. So because this is such a small area, um, this is generally where I would use, continue using the detail brush, but we are going to expand and use bigger brushes. So I'm just gently going over this. Um, as you may know, acrylic is opaque. So you will be able to cover up uh, the pencil. You can cover up the graphite. This I'm just drawing out where I want my flowers to be. Might end up going like this. sort of look like rocks now, but don't worry. <laughs> we will change that up. So I'm gonna put a leaf over here. Uh, we'll do a leaf over here. Over there. And we'll do there for now. Cool, so looks like a bunch of eggs or a bunch of rocks, that's just the beginning. So um, I am going to start here with this like relatively large brush and I'm gonna start with my biggest flower. Um, and of course my biggest flower is gonna be pink. So um, this is definitely leveling up my paint brushing technique because it doesn't have a point to it. And because it doesn't have a point, it is a little bit harder to maneuver those rounded corners and that rounded style. So I'm just gonna take my time. I think that's the biggest lesson that we learn with painting is that you can't get a whole masterpiece done in five minutes. So I'm just going to take my time here. Another great tip that sometimes you just learn the hard way is that you can just move your canvas. <laughs> Some of us forget that like the canvas is not glued down. So you can just move the canvas instead of making it difficult on yourself. Um, so I am looking back and forth at my Let's see, yep, okay, I have the chat open. I am looking back at my computer. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna continue drawing these lines. Um, I am going to mix soon. I'll give you guys a little close up here. It looks like a whole lot of nothing right now. <laughs> Full disclosure. So I'm gonna go back here, bring some pink in, bring some purple in. I think I might need some more pink. Or just a cleaner brush. It's our favorite place to be. It is, okay. Cool, okay. So now that that is mixed, I'm gonna continue over here. Just adding on to the petal design. And again, it's totally fine to have all these white areas showing. It does not have to be perfect. Um, I was in Trader Joe's the other day, and I think Trader Joe's is 
the best place for floral inspiration, at least the Trader Joe's near me. Um, they have a, they always just have like a fantastic floral selection um, where you can like build your own bouquets and whatnot. So if you end up doing this again, or just like, you know, you wanna make a card for a friend or something like that, and you want some floral inspiration, highly recommend stopping by Trader Joe's first. <laughs> I feel like they know what they're doing. So I'm just going back in here again to really blend more of the pink and the purple. I guess I could have gone to Trader Joe's at some point today to get some inspiration, but the internet will just have to do. Totally fine. All right, going in with more solid purple to fill in the space. Ooh, if you hear noises in the background, it's because people are coming in and out of my apartment building. My studio is right next to my back door. <laughs> cool. Okay, so check it out. When that dries, I actually may go in later with the thinner detail brush to give it more defined round uh, uh, like petal shapes. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave it like that. It should dry relatively quickly. So let's move right along. And I think that was my biggest flower. So I'm actually going to move on to this medium sized brush and um, make a, should I do purple or blue? I'm going to do a purple based brush, um, flower, excuse me. So starting here and just taking it around. Boop. Whoa, okay, that was, just be careful not to load up your brush too, too much with paint because that could be, that could get real messy real fast. So I think the purple starting on the inside is going to blend outwards to blue. So I'll show you in a second what I'm going to do next in order to get that. So I've got another well over here. I'm going to scoop some purple in it. Clean off my brush. And scoop some blue. That is a lot of blue. That is a piece of dog hair. We don't want that in here. I'm just gonna mix the two colors. I'm gonna go and actually use a little bit more purple. Awesome. Okay, so we've got our next round here. And it turned it into more of like a violet color, which I actually really like. I guess you could say these are kind of like abstract flowers. Um, another fun thing you could do if you are sick of painting and you have some Honestly, if you have like crayons or markers around, you could do this same exact style with that, like the same exact style of flowers with colored pencils, crayons, markers. If you have a bunch of like pens, even like the Bic pens, if you got a few different blues, you know what? Give it a shot. <laughs> Sometimes this is like my go-to flower design for when I'm really bored on meetings, in meetings, <laughs> and I'm just trying to like look occupied. 
You know what I mean? It's a fun style to, to build on. So I'm just going in a little bit here to blend in my blue with my purple. Yeah, I always feel like instead of taking notes, I'm just sort of doodling in meetings. <laughs> and this is definitely one of those. One of those perfect flowers that you can doodle. All right, we've got two. Not bad, not bad. I've got a bunch of little guys over here. So um, let's do another purple to blue. I'm gonna do, um, oh, well, I guess we're doing them over here since I just smudged. So <laughs> let's clean off our brush. I'm actually gonna switch cups here. This one's much cleaner. Okay, so we start out with, um, you know what? I think this time we're gonna start out with blue in the middle and then take it out to purple. Oh, a little too much on the brush. And sometimes brushes can be finicky. Like right now, I'm not sure if you can see that. My brush is sort of like splitting. That's totally fine. Um, it's actually pretty beneficial for this style because it's giving me that like streaky spaced out look. So I'm cool with that. I'm not gonna let that bother me. If, it, if I was doing like a Van Gogh masterpiece, I'd be like, okay, time for some new brushes. Um, but in, in a way it's working in its favor right now, this painting's favor. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna continue just using this mixture that I made earlier and build on the outside. I actually love the way that that one is coming out. I was a big fan of the pink now, but I think I'm, I think I'm a blue purple. I feel like we're naming like Power Rangers. I think I'm a blue or a purple Power Ranger right now or flower. <laughs> See. Moving the canvas around, definitely gonna help with covering your colors here. And we're letting the paint tell the direction of the flowers here. I'm gonna go in again, just where the two colors blend and just add a little extra layer of reinforcement color. Sort of looks like an eye, but I think that will change when the green leaves start coming in. Pretty cool. All right, I say let's work backwards again for maybe right here. Um, we'll do purple in the middle and then pink on the outside. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna need some, let me rearrange my paper towels real quick. They're getting real saturated. I'm holding this off to the side as sort of like a guide too. So that's been pretty helpful. Okay, so we're doing purple on the inside, that's what. This one's really small. So I'm gonna transition this one really quick into the pink. And I already have this color mixed from earlier, so that's pretty nice. I'm not gonna overlap this blue area. Um, I want it so that this flower is above this flower. So I'm going to sort of like stop my circles right when I hit the, the blue of the flower that's on top. 
stuff. So we're sort of like looking top down at the flowers. All right, now let's move on to pink. Finally got a pink flower on the outside. Awesome. Yeah, loving the way this one's coming out. And I hope you guys are enjoying yours too. Cool, so that was a, a quick, little, quick little bud. Um, I've got two more here. What are the other combos that we can do? Um, we can do, uh, pink and blue might be a bit of a stretch, but we can try it. So I'm going to start this guy in the middle with pink. gonna be a pretty small one. Uh, that's the one color combo that we did not mix. So pink and blue. Scoop. You don't need a lot of paint on your brush and you don't need a lot of paint to mix. So you wanna make sure that you can get these little paint canisters to last as long as possible. So you don't have to you know, continue to buy more paint or something like that. So you don't need a lot. Same thing goes with watercolor. A lot, a little can go a long way with watercolor, which is a nice little benefit there. So what's great is that when you mix the blue and the pink, it makes purple. So that's a discovery for us. I'm just doing one thin round here cleaning off my brush and then going straight to blue. This one is like a tie dyed flower, you know. He just, this flower just wants attention. But it is a nice mix of all the colors that we have in our palette for the most part, except for the green. Cool, so what I'm gonna do Clean this guy off. Bring a little bit more pink back in. Just so I can blend it a little bit more. And like I said before, I'm gonna go back in with the white paint once everything dries and add a little bit more texture. Cool, so we got that guy. Now we're gonna do our last flower or maybe I'll, keep that flower out. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna keep that flower out and I'm gonna end up putting a leaf there instead. So um, we have these white spaces in between and what we can do is we're going to take, um, we'll do pink first. We're gonna take pink and mix it with white clean your brush. You're going to want a lot of white for this. So we're just going to gently fill in the spaces in between with similar colors to what's being featured in the flowers. So I'm going to do this. I'm being super gentle with this. I don't want it to interfere with my flowers. All right, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of light, uh, what is that? Like a light bluish purple. I'm actually just gonna add white to this mixture. Oh, darn, I touched the paint. Um, one of the most fun things about acrylic paint is the mixing. So 
enjoy it while you can, <laughs> while you're creating colors, just enjoy it. All right, so I'm adding that in. I'm gonna move this around a little bit and I'm going to add it in here. So I'll bring this up close so you guys can see the process. Ooh, my paintbrush is hitting my stand. So that is an issue. I will not do that. I'll adjust. Cool. All right, so we filled in those spaces a little bit. I'm leaving the outer spaces white because we're gonna add leaves. And we've got another pretty saturated water uh, jar, but you know what? That's fine. We'll be okay. All right. I'm just gonna blow on it a little bit to uh, get it to dry a little bit faster. Um, other tricks, if you've got a fan, you can literally just like wave the fan over. Um, I've seen people take blow dryers, uh, like for your hair, um, to their paintings in order for them to dry faster. I'm not into that, but if you are, go for it. If you're in a rush. I don't recommend you rush your paintings, but some people got other places to be, so. All right, so we are going into leaf painting now, so. I have my initial line drawings here. I am going to gently with my detail brush, move very slowly. This is gonna be a giant leaf. I will probably do more than one coat to this. Here we go, our leaf. I'm gonna tuck him in between the flowers a little bit. Actually, that might be good to see a little bit closer. See how I've tucked him in between these two flowers? And I know this is a detail brush, but I am just gonna fill this in. Um, and I'm not gonna do it completely because I want it to be sort of choppy and a similar style to the flowers. Cool, okay. Great first leaf. <laughs> um, next, let's um, maybe just add like another, like another little stem. Well, not even a stem, but just like maybe a new leaf growing. Just gently tuck him in there. And then I'll put another one over here. The detail brush is doing its job. It's doing the details. I'm also gonna add, not a full leaf, but I'm gonna add some greenery around some of the areas just to show that this is a flower. And you know, if you look at a bouquet of flowers, not every individual bud has a single leaf with it. You know, I think we talked about already that like every flower is unique. So flowers are bound to have multiple leaves around them or on them. So we're gonna go with that. So this guy is feeling pretty good, pretty surrounded by good leaves. Um, I'm gonna add a leaf here, have him hug this side. Um, I'm adding more pressure to the bristles of the brush in order to get these wider areas. So you're pushing down more and then lifting up. A little brush work 101 for ya. I'm gonna, again, do a little detail on the opposite side too. Boop. This guy will have another little detail spot. 
and he's also going to sort of follow around. There we go. They're all very uh, graceful. All right, so I'm gonna move my way around this way. So adding more leaves. Again, this is the part where you can sort of be, make it organic. You just, if you don't wanna put actual leaves, that's fine. Boop. Just to show there are leaves. And really using the little like crevices between the flowers. Now I made this little like V indent here because I'm gonna put a big leaf here. Boom. And I'm gonna give him Oop, there you go. So he is more open. Kind of could be, this could definitely be like a tattoo, no? A little flower tattoo. All right. So we are slowly making our way around here. I'm going to do another big leaf over here. Boom. Oh, what time is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, lately I've been losing track of time while doing art projects um, because I've just been in like the creative flow um, state that, that you get into, you know, when you're like focusing on something really hard and everything else just sort of like goes away that is a creative flow that I try to get into every single time I do work. Um, and I feel like I may have experienced that just now. So that's good. And then I looked at the time and saw that we have plenty. Plenty of time. Cool. So I'm just going to add a couple little more here. Leaves are looking really good. Might add, do I want to add more? I think we're going to hold off for now. Um, I'm going to clean off my brush because I'm going to use it again. The, uh, the flowers themselves, I think, are pretty dry. You can do like a quick, uh, I do the pinky test. Yeah, it's pretty dry. The texture that I'm feeling is really just like the canvas, so that's totally fine. So using the detail brush, we're just going to use white and we're going to go in and add some more detail um, on the actual flower itself, really solidifying that swirl motion. So I'm going to start with my biggest flower. He's probably the driest. And with a steady, steady hand, I'm just sort of going around. You will need to pick up some paint for this as you go. Um, it's okay if it is not showing up the first time because we're gonna do multiple layers. And I'm just adding that detail. I'll get it closer to you guys. So the swirl, the white swirl is giving it more definition. So it looks like, it looks like a flower. So laying down the color was sort of like laying down our foundation for what was to come, which is these white lines. If you're picking up color that's not white on your brush, that means your painting, your like under layer painting is not dry yet. So you might wanna hold off on that guy. Cool. 
cool, cool. All right. That guy looks pretty good. I'm going to leave him the way he is and move on to the next one. Uh, which is this guy. And always start from the center. Boop. Oh yeah, it's looking super defined. Exactly what I wanted. And having the white lines there is also helping the blending happen. So you see how like, you see the pink, you see the purple and the blue. When we get over there, um, adding these white lines will help it look more blended. Blended more, more blended. I don't know. This is an art class, not an English class. Blendable, blended, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm happy with the way that one looks. So let's move on to these other guys. They need some help. Getting more white on the brush. I'm gonna do this guy. I'm sort of going from big to small. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, now, if we had a different color palette, if we had like yellows and oranges, you could use white to make these, these detail lines, or you could use black. Black is a beautiful contrast on really warm colors like red, yellow, and orange. Um, purple and blue are technically cool colors. Green as well. The pink is just sort of like a wild card that we threw in. Um, so with cool colors, the contrast is in, is in the white. So um, I could technically use black, but the white is really what's gonna make it stand out here. So I'm just gonna reset my brush real quick, clean it off. Great, um, add more white. I've got two more here. All right, this is the one that's like, it's so colorful. Let's make sure that we can pull it together here. Awesome, awesome. I think that definitely helped. Definitely helped. All right, and now we have this last guy. The purple to the pink might be one of my favorites. I've also been practicing since I'm a lefty. I've been practicing not covering my artwork while people are watching. Um, I have a, you know I have a really good habit of covering my artwork and just getting really into it. So. Um, Hopefully you can see everything while I paint it this time. Cool. All right, so we've got those guys. Um, I think I'm just gonna add a couple more leaves. All right. Just a few other leaf accents. It's not, it doesn't seem like a full bouquet, but we're gonna give it a shot. A little bit more this way. And I have some spots like over here, this white area, this area. I may go in and do like a little bit of a wash, sort of like what we did with the pink and the purple here. Um, but I might wait until like tomorrow because I want everything to be completely dried. Um, so 
you know, not all paintings were made in an hour. <laughs> Most paintings were made in longer than an hour. That is for sure. So I think I'm gonna, whoop, I'm gonna adventure off the edge a little bit. Just bring some of these to the end. just to have it feel a little bit more grounded on the canvas instead of just sort of floating. Pretty cool. And then if you want, I'm just gonna do a little bit of it. Add some leaves or maybe these are the, maybe these are roses and there's like Oh, what's it called? Thorns. There's uh, thorns on here. Sort of like a vine. Rose bush, rose vine. Just to make it feel more grounded on the canvas. Sweet. I like the way it came out. Um, I definitely think I'm gonna wait until it dries completely before I do anything else to fill in the white space. Um, just know that you don't have to completely cover the canvas. There are no rules here. You could just leave it the way it is and call it a day. Um, but you know, if you don't like seeing the white canvas in the back, you can always do some extra things in the background. Um, also generally when it dries completely, I end up sanding my work in the corner. Um, I will do that here for you guys tonight. Let's see, I have a marker. Boop. Can add it for you. So when you hang it up or when you put it on the stand, oh, I'll show you guys that. So my initials are SR. And I usually do um, the year, so it's 21. That's what I do when I have a finished piece. Um, I always sign my work. So in your set probably came with this little uh, this little uh, stand, this little uh, easel. Um, this one's a little big, but actually I wonder if it'll if it'll stand. I actually really love these easels. We used them in the last session. Yeah, it fits. I know that looks a little weird on Zoom, but um, this is something that is so perfect for like standing it up in your living room or standing it up in your kitchen. Um, full disclosure, the apple that we painted last time, I actually have on the stand and it's in my boyfriend's kitchen. So he looks at the apple every day when he cooks. So pretty cute the way that worked out. Um, so that is pretty much it for our final piece tonight. I know I said I was gonna do two, but I think just one came out perfect. Um, let's recap. What we did tonight, we mixed a bunch of colors. Don't be afraid to mix colors. Um, it's an experiment every single time. Uh, we swatched out our colors. Again, you don't have to mix the colors in order to make flowers. You could just do a solid purple flower. Um, some of these colors are just fantastic on their own. There is white up here, you just can't see it. Um, and I recommend with acrylic drawing out what you want to create first and then painting over it because the paint will cover, um, the paint will cover up the graphite pencil marks that you leave down. Um, so that is always a plus. Um, and again, I just used like a piece of construction paper to uh, map out and swatch out everything that I had um, in my set. Then we moved on to bigger and better things and made our own little uh, bouquet of flowers. Um, so this style is super easy to translate with paint, um, crayons, pencils, you name it. It's super easy to make um, these types of flowers um, and just makes a, like an abstract bouquet look. Um, so that is about it for now. Um, as a reminder, if you are interested in art snacks, um, which is a monthly subscription box for art supplies. You do get acrylic paint in your boxes every once in a while. So you'll get fresh paint, you'll get fresh brushes. Um, and we do have all different types of canvases and paper pads too. So 
since this is for the Bristol Community College, you can go to artsnacks.co and sign up there and use the code BRISTOL10 to get 10% off your first box. So if you enjoyed this and want to explore more in the world of painting, highly recommend to subscribe and you can uh, sharpen your painting skills there too. Um, every once in a while we do online courses as well. So if you um, end up subscribing and you don't know what to do with your supplies, we have YouTube videos that come out all the time. So um, those will be super helpful uh, for learning new tips and tricks. Um, so that is about it from me tonight. So thank you for joining. I see we've got Valerie and Collins and Mike Fox. <laughs>